Good day, students. I will be recording this question. And this is a very comprehensive question on the topic uh, called close cooperation. So now I will be recording uh, this question on close cooperation. And uh, it, it will cover the statement of financial positions, the statement of comprehensive income, and the statement of changes in equity, meaning uh, all the three uh, main financial statements. And we are told that Newton and Ioka have been operating a close corporation called New York Close Corporation for the past few years and have a 70% and 30% members' interest. Please take note of the members' interest because this is uh, these are the percentages that will be used to split or to share the members' contribution. And also, these are the percentages that will be used to split or to share the distribution of profit uh, that has been made by the end of the accounting period. So now these are their members' interest, and it says the trial balance for New York Close Corporation at 31st of December in the year 2010. So now meaning it is given to us below that this trial balance is at the end of December in the year 2010. So meaning the assumption is that the figures that appear in this entire trial balance are at the end of the accounting period unless there is further information provided in the adjustment stating otherwise. Now I will just like to go and scan on the requirements that I will be doing and uh, how will I strategize uh, responding to such a big question where there's a trial balance and there is notes or additional information then after there is some requirements as i said that my main focus is to do the financial statements income statement statement of changes in equity and the statement of financial position for a close corporation we are required to prepare general entries to adjust the interest expense on 31st december 2010 as well as the closing transfer to the profit and loss account and consider only note number C and the relevant accounts on the trial balance. Then number two, prepare the asset disposal account by end of December and the accumulated depreciation for the vehicles account for the current year. I'm not going to be starting with these questions, but I will be responding to these small questions as I am answering the bigger picture, which is the financial statements, because my main focus is to look at the bigger picture, then I will be at the same time responding to the small requirements while I'm answering the main three financial statements. Then I am to prepare the insurance expense account that I must also be mindful of and consider all the relevant information do the statement of comprehensive income so now this is the main focus this is my target is to do this uh, statement then the second one is to do the statement of changes in equity and in this question we are required only to prepare only to prepare consider all the relevant information and prepare only the current liability section of the statement of financial position i will do everything i will do the entire statement of financial position uh, despite the fact that the question only required us to do the current liability section so that we we, we are able to compile the entire financial statement also take note that we are required to so this will be my Perhaps number three uh, question that I will be responding to. Members' interest-free loan is also partly required. And number eight, consider number I and all other relevant information to do the following. Calculate the value of your car's interest-free loan in the corporation. This one we normally don't assess at our institution and we is no longer part of the syllabus and also number nine is uh, no longer part of the syllabus mm -hmm. 
uh, therefore now we will oh no this is normally done at second year when we do shares so the issue of shares i will also not going to respond to that i do have questions uh, for financial accounting too where pref where shares are declared and issued number 10 is just the multiple choice questions i will not be responding also to the multiple choice questions so the main focus for me will be number four number five and number six and while i'm responding to number four <clears throat> number five and number six which is the statement of comprehensive income the statement of changes in equity and the statement of financial position i will also be partly responding to the small requirements along the way and you'll see how my strategy of uh, compiling financial statements. A design information is something that I will do after I have recorded all the numbers that are supposed to be recorded and are from the trial balance <clears throat> to the financial statement that I'll be doing. The first uh, line item is the member's contribution, meaning, remember, there are two members, member Newton and Yoka and they definitely have contributed capital to the business which is called the members contribution therefore now this amount of 600,000 rands should be divided according to the interest of the members which is 70 percent of that members contribution is the contribution that was made by member newton and 30 percent of the 600,000 rands is the contribution that was made by a uh, member Yoka. So now we can do the calculation and say 600,000 rands times this by 70% and this gives us 420,000 rands. So now that means member Newton contributed 420,000 rands and the next member will obviously have contributed 180,000 rands because the difference between the two will be 180,000 rands. Then now we can say 420,000 minus 600,000 rands. That will be 180,000 or still 600,000 rands. Time this by 30%. Uh, therefore now meaning member Yoka have contributed uh, 180,000 out of this member's contribution. Have that at the back of your mind because we will need these numbers as we progress in this uh, exercise. Then we have revaluation reserves, and in the revaluation reserves, we have an amount of 200,000 rands. We are not sure exactly if is this 200,000 rands at the end of the year, meaning after the revaluation for the current year has been taken into account, that we might say not sure, but we are told that the trial balance is at the end of the year, but not necessarily to say that all the entries during the current year have been recorded. So there might be some items that need to be accounted for to make adjustments to these balances. And again, in this member's contribution of 600,000 rands, we don't know either is it at the end of December, meaning after the contribution of capital during the year was done. That we are not sure. We still have to listen to the adjustments uh, that will give us some further information regarding the contribution by the members during the current year. If was there any contribution and was it recorded? And again, with the revaluation reserves, was there any revaluation during the current year? If the answer is yes, was it recorded? Then if it was not recorded, meaning we still have to record, then after this amount will be before the current year's revaluation was considered or taken into account. Then if you look at the retained earnings, they clearly specify that it is on the 1st of January in the year 2010, and the amount is 510,000 rands. For these two, we are still unsure either they are opening balance or closing balances. <clears throat> Now we have a 15% mortgage loan and that is 600,000 rands and which is at the end of the year. And assuming that there was no repayment, if we assume that there was no repayment, we multiply the loan by 15%. This will give us the amount of the interest that is supposed to be paid on this loan. So now let me just calculate that and say 600,000 rands time this by 15 percent this will give us an amount of ninety thousand rands 
Now, meaning the interest that is supposed to be paid is 90,000 rands. And I'm writing this under the assumption that there was no repayment of the loan in terms of capital during the current year. So if there was no repayment of the loan and the business was owing this loan from the 1st of January until the 31st of December, therefore the interest on this loan that was supposed to be paid will be accurately calculated as 90,000 rands. Then we still have to check maybe was there any repayment of this loan uh, during the year in the trial balance and also uh, looking at the adjustment and we also have to look at the interest uh, in the trial balance if how much interest was already paid then after now we have accounts payables and our accounts payables is 173,000 rands no problem SARS provisional tax payments is 90,000 rands remember we have to take this figure we compare this figure with the tax expense, meaning the tax that we estimated to be the tax payable to SARS during the current year. So now SARS provisional tax payment still need to be compared with the tax expense to determine either do we owe SARS by the end of the current year or SARS owes us. We have property vehicles at cost accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. Take note of that meaning depreciation for the current year is not yet accounted for and after we have accounts receivables and our account receivables is 198,000 rands then we have allowance for credit loss at the beginning of the year once again take note of that it is at the beginning of the year an amount of 11,000 rands then now we have our prepaid insurance expense at the beginning of the year and whenever there is a prepaid expense, income received in advance, accrued expense or accrued income, make sure that you do a reversal of this immediately. And if you look at this, we have prepaid insurance recorded on the debit side as 3000 meaning this is an asset because the prepaid expense is an asset. Is something that you pay before time. Therefore, now by the end of the current year, this prepaid expense was no longer prepaid because the three thousand is likely to be paid for the first month of the current year, but paid in the previous month, meaning in the year twenty eleven, the three thousand must have been paid and paid for the month of January. But now when January comes and it comes to an end of January, meaning the 3000 is no longer prepaid because the period in which this 3000 was prepaid for has arrived or has came and passed. So now we need to cancel the asset where we now recognize that this expense is the insurance for the current year. Then we increase our expense because this expense is for the current year. We increase our insurance by 3000 and we reverse or cancel the prepaid expense in terms of insurance and this prepaid expense is an amount of 3000 rands. And please also be mindful that if we were doing a ledger account for prepaid insurance, now this is partly answering one of the questions. If we're doing the ledger account uh, 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 for insurance, this was going to be an opening balance because this opening balance is an opening balance of 3000 of an asset. Therefore, now we will be recording insurance uh, on the credit side, which is the insurance of 3000. This one from the general entry. This is an opening balance. And now this 3000 is canceling that opening balance. So now we still have to account for the insurance for the current year. So this ledger account is not yet done, but please be mindful of the fact that there must be a reversal entry for all the prepayments or accruals or income received in advance or accrued income that are there in the beginning of the year. Therefore now, uh, I will still come back and explain this uh, further in relation to the statement of financial position. We have our inventory being 141,000 rands. We have members interest free loan, Newton and Yorker. And it is very unlikely that uh, examination will assess the case, the same concept twice. 
And what do I mean by that is the fact that the members' interest-free loan, they are all recorded on the debit side, meaning these are the loans to members. Meaning these are the loans to members, and you know that a loan to a member is an asset. So now these two loans are both assets. This is an asset, and this is an asset. And you can also see that these two loans, which is a loan of 100,000 rands and a loan of 30,000 rands, uh, that is to the member, is recorded on the debit side of the trial balance, indicating that these are the assets of the business. Now, let me just uh, put this across and say it is unlikely once again that you will be assessed uh, on the same principle. And that means the 30,000 is likely to be on the credit side so that another loan is a loan from a member, another loan is a loan to a member. But for this question, uh, they assessed the same concept, which is interest free loan on a loan to because of the same application and the same understanding. But in any exam, uh, be mindful of the fact that you will be normally given two loans, loans to a member and a loan from a member, meaning another one being recorded on the credit side, as I have highlighted. That will be a loan from a member indicating that it is a liability. Now, let us proceed on that same note. Then we have our bank account sales and cost of sales. Then after we have interest expense on a mortgage loan this is the interest expense that we have already paid and i like to always say that expenses and incomes that are in the trial balance are the expenses that are already paid or incomes that have already been received before the adjustments are taken into account meaning the figures of incomes that are in the trial balance are the incomes that have already been received. Remember, this is before the adjustments are accounted for. And the expenses that appears in your trial balance are the expenses that have already been paid before the adjustments are taken into account, only with exception to sales. That it does not speak to sales because we can sell on credit and we recognize that in the trial balance before the adjustment that it is the amount of sales. So now I'm not talking to sales but to all other incomes and expenses. Also in exception to uh, credit losses and depreciation because we don't pay depreciation and we also don't pay credit losses. So now when it comes to this interest expense, we have 82,500, but the amount of the interest that uh, I provisionally calculated was supposed to be 90,000 rands. So now that means we paid 82,000 rands instead of 90,000 rands. And if we deduct uh, 82,500 from 90,000 rands, I get the difference of 7,500 meaning this will be what you call accrued expense this will be accrued expense expense not yet paid so now this is a liability accrued expense is a liability then let us do a general entry for this accrued expense in terms of insurance then we debit remember accrued expense is sorry in terms of interest accrued expense it is a liability so we increase our interest expense because our interest expense is supposed to be 90,000 rands so now we must increase that that by 7.5 then we credit our accrued expense our accrued insurance expense and the accrued insurance expense is 7,500 so now this will be how we record the accrued expense and if we have to do the closing entries, we have to do the closing entries. Now we have to be debiting our profit and loss closing entry for the accrued expense. We debit profit and loss 7,500 and we credit our interest expense. That is the closing entry of the interest expense. When you close it off to profit and loss, that will be debiting profit and loss and we credit interest expense that is the closing entry of that 
then now let me proceed on that same note i'm just analyzing what is in the trial balance then now we have credit losses of 10,000 rands insurance that has been paid is 36,000 rands and we also know that there was prepaid insurance of 3,000 for the current year it was prepaid last year for the current year wages amounted to 200,000 rands salaries to members amounted to 40,000 rands operating and admin cost amounting to 44,000 rands now from here i immediately record the skeleton of all my statement i've already done the statement of changes in equity but let me start with the income statement because that is where we're supposed to begin so now i will be recording all the information that is from the trial balance before i even go to my adjustments start first with what is given then after I go to the adjustment and record accordingly then i will be starting with the statement of profit or loss statement of profit or loss and the statement of profit or loss for the year ended for the year ended the 31st of december in the year 2010 for the year ended 31st of december <clears throat> in the year 2010 i know that this statement starts with sales therefore i have to record the amount of sales then after i have cost of sales <clears throat> <clears throat> After the cost of sales, I will have what you call gross profit. Then let me look for the amount of sales and the amount of cost of sales and check if do we have a gross profit as uh, the difference between the two. The amount of sales is 2,370,000 and cost of sales 1,380,000 runs. 2,370,000 <clears throat> and I'm writing this figure here because there might be sales returns and sales return will affect my cost of sales negatively. So now after I have added the two then I will get to what we call gross profit. So there is a line here in between where I will be recording the gross profit as the net of the two. Then there will be other incomes. There will be other incomes. Under other incomes, please take note of that we are dealing with the close cooperation. And the other income that we can have because of the close cooperation or because we are dealing with the close cooperation is interest income or interest on a loan that was given to a member. So now we can have what you call interest income, which is the interest on a loan that was given to a member. And another line item that you can have is because there will be profit on sale or profit on disposal of an asset. If there's an asset that was disposed, so and there's a profit made, that is likely to be recorded here. But I will only record what is given in the scenario of this exercise, which is the profit, not the interest. Therefore, now the profit on disposal is there and I will do calculate it for you. Profit on disposal. Now uh, we go to the next part. <clears throat> and the reason why we don't have the interest on a loan that was given to a member is because the loans that were given to a member were free of interest members interest free loan interest free loan meaning these loans they don't have the interest and besides these are the loans that were f uh, were given to the member but they don't have the interest so now hence there will not be interest in the statement of comprehensive income as interest income they are not paying interest in this cross corporation yet they borrowing money therefore now profit on the disposal of an asset i will account for that and immediately then i have to say less expenses then i deduct my expenses and i have to look at my expenses individually 
the first expense that i have it is uh, remember finance cost will be there at the bottom so i'm not going to start with the finance cost because it is at the bottom the first one it is credit losses second one insurance so i start with the credit losses of 10000 rands the amount of credit loss is 10000 rands Remember, the reason why I'm opening brackets is because the adjustments have not yet been <clears throat> accounted for. There are figures that I might need to add or subtract because of the adjustment. The next one is the insurance, and the insurance is 36,000 rands. Remember, credit loss was 10,000 rands. Insurance is 36,000 rands. Then I record my insurance expense. And my insurance expense is given as 36,000 rands. First, record what is given. Then we have wages amounting to 200,000 rands. Then I have to record the wages amounting to 200,000 rands. Open brackets, 200,000 rands. So that if there's an adjustment, I will be able to add or subtract based on that adjustment. Then after I have salaries that were paid to members, 240,000 rands. Then I record salaries to members. Salaries to members. And my salaries to members, it is 240,000 rands. Then after I go to the last expense according to the trial balance, operating plus admin cost operating plus admin cost operating plus administration cost and operating plus admin cost is an amount of 44,000 rands please don't forget to make provision for this expense that we call depreciation depreciation is likely not to be in the trend balance but make provision for that and also another provision that you must put across immediately and i am sure that there will always be enough space is the loss on disposal of an asset in the case where the asset sold made a loss the loss will be recorded remember you can't make a profit on the sale of an asset and a loss on the sale of the same asset it will be one of the two not both of them unless you sold two assets another one you made a profit another one you made a loss so now in this case i just want to bring into your mind that there might be a loss made on the disposal of an asset but i know in this scenario we only have made a profit on the disposal of the asset that was disposed depreciation i don't have anything that is in place and i know that after the depreciation i have to account for finance cost then i have to account for finance cost and i have to look for finance cost in my trial balance and in my trial balance i had finance cost being interest expense of eighty two thousand five hundred rands then i record this as eighty two thousand five hundred Remember, I already know that 7.5 must be added so that the finance cost by the end of the year is total to 90,000 rands. That is what I know. But let me just leave it because I've calculated that 7.5. Remember, ex expenses increase on the debit side. So the minute I debited my interest expense, it means this uh, expense must increase the interest expense account. That is why now I am saying plus to that 8,500. Then I'll get to profit before tax ex taxation expense. Profit before tax. Profit before taxation. And my profit before tax, then after we get taxation expense. I get to taxation expense. Then after I will have to get to profit for the year. Profit for the year. Then after I will have to add what you call other comprehensive incomes. Other comprehensive income. And under other comprehensive income we have revaluation. 
we have revaluation surplus. Then we get to total comprehensive income. Total comprehensive income. Then this will be the end of the income statement. So now we move on that same note. This one is done. Remember the statement of changes in equity I've already recorded on this one. And I know that in my statement of changes in equity, I uh, might need or I need an opening balance. I need my balances or let me write the names of the members first. We have member Newton and member Yoka. Then draw the line there in between. Then I will have to write the balances. Balance on the 1st of January in the year 2010. Then opening balance that I have in the trial balance regarding the statement of changes in equities only retained earnings that I'm very sure of. Because a member's contribution is not clearly stipulated if it's an opening balance or not. Revaluation reserves also not very clear. It's only retained earnings that they specified that is an opening balance 501,000 rands. So I will record others after the adjustment has been taken into account. So now I have member's contribution. Then I will also need uh, the column called revaluation. Then I will need to have a column called general reserves. Then I will need to have a column called retained earnings. Retained earnings. And under retained earnings, my balance is 501,000. It is 501,000 rands. Then after, there will be a total column. So now this is how my statement of change in equity will partly look like before it is completed. Then after I go to the statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. And my statement of financial position start with the assets. Then after we split our assets into current and non-current is at 31st of December in the year 2010. We know that we start with the assets and I'm not going to write the assets only because of the fact that I have very much limited space. So now please don't erase this, write it as assets, but I will immediately start by saying non-current assets. Non-current assets. And under non-current assets, I know that there's property, plant, and equipment. Then under property, plant, and equipment, I need to go and check my items of property, plant, and equipment. Which ones do I have? I do have the property that is costing 1.5 million. So my property is costing 1,500,000 rands. Then I look at another item of PPE. And that is vehicles amounting to 700,000 rands. And take note that there might have been an asset that was sold during the year. And that asset, it could it's possible that is not yet recorded. So these vehicles appearing in the trial balance might be the vehicles, including the vehicle that was sold during the year, not yet recorded. Then I need to minus my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. And once again, this accumulated is likely that it is including the accumulated depreciation for an asset that was sold during the year but not yet removed or not yet accounted for or, reco or, or, or recorded. So now my accumulated depreciation, it is 330,000 rands. Then minus 330,000 rands. Remember, I still have to deduct the depreciation for the current year for the assets that were in the business until the end of the year. Then now, if there was a fixed deposit, 
that will have to be accounted for but there was no fixed deposit so i will leave that or long-term investment that will be recorded under non-current assets then now i go to my current assets and my current assets is made of inventory then i go and i look at the amount of the inventory in the trial balance <clears throat> Inventory in the trial balance uh, is given as 141,000 rands. There is the amount of the inventory. Inventory 141,000 rands. That's what appears in the trial balance. And I record that as 141,000 rands. Then after I have a uh, data which is trade receivables. I have data which is trade receivables. And I prefer it to say data is only because of space purposes. So accounts receivables, accounts there I have, sorry, not accounts payables. There is accounts receivables. Account receivables, it is 198,000 rands. That is the amount of the data is 198,000 rands. Then after I will have cash and cash equivalent, which is bank. Then I also look at the amount of bank that appears in the trial balance. Look at the bank account. There is the bank account amounting to 30,500. And it's on the debit side, meaning it's a favorable balance, it's an asset. Then 30,500 is the amount of the bank. Then there is another item that uh, needs to be recorded because of the topic of close cooperation once again. And that item that need to be recorded here is the loan to member. Loan to members. And the company did give loan to members. And we had two loans that were given to members. And we know that a loan to a member is an asset. That is why now both of these loans are recorded on the debit side as... <clears throat> 100,000 and 130,000. Just clear so that we can see very well where we are. Here are the members' interest free loans, meaning loan given to members, and they appear on the debit side of the trial balance, meaning they are both assets, and the total of the two is 130,000 rands. So I'm going to record this as one amount, not a separate amount, because in the statement of financial position, we will not be splitting the loans. So now these are the loans to members. <clears throat> and also please be mindful that we can pay more money to SARS than we expected to pay. So now if we pay too much, meaning if the provisional tax payments, if you remember we had provisional tax payments in the trial balance. If the SARS provisional tax payments, they are above the tax expense, Therefore, now the difference will be recorded here as SARS current tax receivables. It will be recorded as SARS current tax receivable. But I know that there was no uh, overpayment. Then now I will not uh, record in this line item, but be mindful that there can be SARS current tax receivable in the case where the provisional tax payments are more than the tax expense that we anticipated. Then now we come to equity and liability. We come now to equity and liability section of the statement of financial position. We say equity and liabilities. Then after we say the amount of the equity. The amount of the equity, remember, it will be coming from the total of the statement of changes in equity here at the bottom. The total of this figure is the one that will go straight uh, under the equity line item in the statement of changes in equity. Uh, then now we go to our liabilities and I will write the heading and erase it again only because of saving space. There is a line item called liabilities. Then now under liabilities we write non-current liabilities. Under liabilities we have non-current. 
Then under non-current, we had a 15% mortgage loan. We had a 15% mortgage loan. And that mortgage loan amounted to 600,000 rands. Remember, there might be a repayment that takes place or a portion of the loan that is payable within 12 months. There we had the mortgage loan that amounted to 600,000 rands. So that is exactly what I'm recording. So now we are not recording the interest in the statement of financial position, but the loan. Interest only affects the income statement. Then after we have the current liabilities. Under current liabilities, we will have uh, payables or accounts payables. Trade payables. And under trade payables, I have to go to my trial balance and check how much is the amount of trade payables that appears in the trial balance. Accounts payables in the trial balance are recorded there as accounts payables and the amount is the amount is 173,000 rands. <clears throat> 173,000 rands is the amount of the accounts payables. 173,000 rands. Then after we proceed on that same note, we record the next item. And the next item that can be recorded here is the short-term portion of the loan. If there was a short-term portion of the loan, meaning a loan that is payable within the next year. Short-term portion of loan. Then after, if we underpaid SARS, there will be SARS current tax payable. SARS current tax payable. If our provisional tax payments are less than the tax expense that we have anticipated. So now we don't know that one yet and we can leave this uh, information as it is. Then we go to the adjustments now and we record each and every adjustment. Now, let me go and record the adjustments as they appear from the first one to the last one. Yes, another line item now that I have to account for is I just forgot the allowance for credit losses opening balance. The 11,000 should be used to reduce the accounts uh, receivables. That 190,000 must be reduced by the allowance that appear in the beginning of the year. I'll also explain another dimension in which this can be done, then minus 11,000 rents. Then let me then proceed now to the first adjustment and I record all the adjustments as they appear and record them in the financial statements respectively. Then we go to the first adjustment. First adjustment say that Newton and Yoka contributed toward the member's contribution according to their member's interest. There were no contributions during the current year. So now meaning the member's contribution that you see in the trial balance must be split according to the member's interest and be recorded in the statement of changes in equity as opening balance because there was no contribution during the current year and we did multiply that and we did multiply and it gave us the amount of 400 and uh, if I still remember, it was the amount of 420,000 and 180,000 rands. How we got there, we said 600,000 rands times this by 70%. It was 420,000 rand for Newton and 600,000 rands was multiplied by 30% to get 280,000 rands contribution made by a member Yoka in the previous years, not in the current year. So now we have accounted for the first adjustment and we go to the second adjustment. Second adjustment is telling us that the property was revalued at 31st of December 2010 to a fair value of 1.7 million 
and this revaluation has not been recorded. Take note of that. This revaluation has not been recorded. Let us go to the trial balance. In the trial balance, we can see that there is a revaluation reserves of how much? Revaluation reserves of 200,000 rands. Meaning this revaluation reserves of 200,000 rands, it is not the one of the current year. It is the one of the previous year. Meaning this amount of 200,000 rands then becomes an opening balance because it is the revaluation that has been recorded, meaning it was recorded last year, not in the current year, because the revaluation of the current year, which is up to the value of 1.7, was not yet recorded. So now, hence I'm saying always, the trial balance is incomplete without the adjustments. So now, we are very clear that this is an opening balance of the revaluation because a revaluation of the current year has not yet been uh, recorded. 1st of January in the year 2010, this is the opening balance. Then now I can go to the statement of changes in equity. And under revaluation, I can now record. Under revaluation, I can now record the amount of 200,000 rands as an opening balance. There's no general reserves as far as my knowledge is concerned. So now I must come and record revaluation for the current year. And this is the revaluation of the property. And the cost of the property is 1.5 million. <clears throat> that is the cost of the property. And they say the property value has increased from 1.5 to 1.7. Then obviously the increase in the property will be 200,000 rands. 1,700,000 Minus 1,500,000 rands. The revaluation for the current year will be 200,000 rands. So now that will be the amount that we record as the value of the property or the, the revaluation for the current year. Now let me record this in the general, general point of view. I want to record this in the general, general. How do we account for this in the general, general? So now this will be a debit, this will be a debit property and we debit property by 200,000 rands. We credit revaluation, revaluation surplus and we credit revaluation surplus by 200,000 rands. Now, meaning property must increase to 200,000 rands. So now under property plant and equipment, we need to say plus 200,000 rands. Plus 200,000 rands of the revaluation. And under the statement of a comprehensive income, we need to account for the revaluation surplus as 200,000 rands in the income statement. So now we have recorded for the revaluation re uh, in places where it is supposed to be recorded. Now, and if you note that in the revaluation, re we did not record anything. And please don't record anything regarding the revaluation re in regard to the skeleton of your income statement. So now we have uh, recorded this under our asset and also under our income statement. Then let us go now to the second adjustment. And the second adjustment say that provide for the interest expense payable on the mortgage loan for December 2010. So now we must provide for the interest first. There is the full stop. Take note of that. Provide for the interest. Therefore, now we need to calculate the interest that was supposed to be paid. And we did acknowledge that interest that was supposed to be paid for the entire year is not that 82,500 but interest that was supposed to be paid is 90,000 rands so now the interest that is payable for the month of december will be the difference between the two figures which has been accurately calculated as 7,500 rands so now there is part of the interest that was not yet paid we paid 82,500 instead of 90,000 rands. Then after now, this will be debit interest expense. 
debit interest expense 7500 and credit accrued interest accrued expense which is in terms of interest 7500 so now let us increase our interest expense in the income statement which we did that already is a plus to our interest expense there we added 7.5 Therefore, now another part, remember, it is accrued. So now the 7.5, which is on the credit side, is a liability. Because accrued expense is a liability, therefore now this will be recorded under our liabilities in the statement of financial position under trade payables. Let me add that and say plus 7,500. Our liabilities are going up. Then now we go to the next adjustment again. Next adjustment is adjustment number, or is still adjustment number C. This was the first sentence that I responded to. It says, on the 1st of January 2010, 100,000 rands had been repaid. On the 1st of January, beginning of the current year, 100,000 had been repaid on the mortgage loan. The next installment of the 100,000 is payable on the 1st of January 2011. Remember, the accounting period for the current year, we are ending 31st of December in the year 2010. And on the 1st of January 2011, 100,000 will be paid. Therefore, now this becomes a current liability. This becomes a current liability. And current liability will be treated as <clears throat> a short-term portion of the loan meaning this is the short-term portion of the loan that will be paid within the next accounting period. So now that will be how we treat that. We treat that as a current liability. So now if we treat that as a current liability, meaning we are taking it from the long-term loan, we say part of this long-term loan will be paid within a year, which is one day after the end of the current year. So now we remove it from a long-term loan into a short-term portion of the loan that is payable within a year. So now that will be how we account uh, for this type of transaction. For the general entry purposes, we will have to debit long-term loan, long-term loan by 100,000 rands. Then we create it short-term loan we're increasing our short-term loan and reducing our long-term loan if you want you can say 15 percent mortgage loan and you write that detail instead of saying long-term loan so this will be the general entry we are reducing the long-term loan and increasing the short-term loan remember a loan is a liability it increases on the credit side and decrease on the debit side so the minute we debit long-term loan, meaning we are reducing the long-term loan and increasing the short-term loan. And we have uh, done so or recorded it in our financial statements. I want to bring this uh, again to your attention regarding this entry. They say on the 1st of January 2010, 100,000 rands had been repaid on the mortgage loan. And it's a full stop. <clears throat> now, they don't say next this entry was not recorded no they don't say that remember in the previous one it was clearly stated when an amount was not paid they said in the previous one this revaluation has not been recorded but here they don't say this was not recorded meaning there was the repayment on the first of january and when the repayment was done it was recorded then now meaning the balance of 600,000 rands that you see in the total balance is after 100,000 rands was repaid and recorded in the beginning of the year. So now meaning the company was owing the bank the amount of 600,000 rands from the 1st of January until the end of December. So there is no adjustment that we need to do because this was recorded accurately. And interest is based on the balance that you owe the bank from the beginning of the year until the end of the year, except if the repayment took place in the middle of the year. 
Now, let me bring the perspective where the repayment can take place in the middle of the year. And I will leave you with that information without uh, more details on it. Let us say we have the accounting period, which is a period of 12 months. And in the middle of the year, assume that there was a payment. Assume that in the middle of the year, we paid a uh, 100,000 rents. And this middle of the year being June. Assume this is 30 of June. And in January, we owed 600,000 rents. And if we pay 100,000 rents in the middle of the year, meaning by the end of the year, the balance could have came to 500,000 rents. That's what this uh, was going to be. If the repayment took place in the middle of the year. So now the balance was going to be 500,000 rents at the end of the year. And remember that the interest on this loan is calculated at 15%. And if the scenario was of this nature, that will mean that interest for this loan will be calculated at 600,000 rents times by 15%, times this by 6 over 12, January until June. Then after we calculate another interest, this will be the amount of the interest. And the interest after June will have to change and be calculated on the balance of 500,000 rands after the repayment has taken place. And multiply this by 15 times this by six months over 12 months. Therefore now, we'll get the amount of the interest for six months on a balance of the loan of 500,000 rands. Then after we'll also get another interest expense for six months before the repayment of 100,000 rands was made. And you add the two, that becomes the interest for the entire year. Then you compare the interest for the year with what has been paid already in the trial balance to determine either was there any accrued expense or any prepaid expense with regard to the interest expense. So now this is the scenario that you would have done if the repayment had taken place in the middle of the year. But fortunate enough, the repayment of 100,000 rands took place in the beginning of the year and again was recorded. So now we only calculate the interest on the balance from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. And that balance was 600,000 rands. Then now we proceed on that same note. And uh, we go to the next adjustment. So now meaning this adjustment is a uh, very, very clear now adjustment number C. And we go to the very exciting adjust adjustment. Adjustment number D, the very exciting one with the disposal of an asset. And a disposal of an asset is very exciting at all times. Easy to calculate, just challenging the mind of the student. Now, number D says that the vehicle's balance on the trial balance represent two vehicles, vehicle A and vehicle B, which had been bought by the close corporation on the 1st of January in the year 2007. Remember, the accounting period starts in January and ends in December. And these two assets were bought in the beginning of the year 2007, meaning they were in the business for 2007 to 8 2009 and now we are in the 2010 accounting period this is the year that we are busy with 2010 so now these assets have been in the business for the past three years and this is the fourth year they've been in the business both have a useful life of five years take note of that they are in their fourth year they both have a useful life of five years the cost of these assets is given as 400,000 and 200,000 with their residual value, meaning the value of these assets at the end of five years. Remember, residual value is the value of the asset at the end of the useful life, meaning residual value does not depreciate. Hence, it must be deducted from uh, the cost of the asset before calculating depreciation because that is the value at the end of the useful life. So now, meaning the total cost of these assets that were bought on the 1st of January 2007 will amount to 700,000 rands. So now we can see in the trial balance that the cost of our vehicles is 700,000 rands, meaning the asset that was bought during the year is not yet accounted for, and the asset that was sold during the year is not yet removed. Why am I saying that? Because the 700,000 rands is the total cost of all the vehicles 
that were bought three years back. So now let me proceed and 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 to the next level because now they are just giving us the date of the acquisition of the assets and they're giving us the useful life and the residual value. In terms of depreciation, they are still quiet. In terms of the disposal, they are still quiet. Then the next one says the following still have to be recorded in connection with the vehicles. The following still have to be recorded in connection with the vehicles, meaning what is below has not yet been recorded. So now it says provide for depreciation on vehicles for the current financial year. No problem, I will provide, but I still need to know was there any asset sold or not? When was it sold again? Then now it says on the 31st of December, end of the accounting period, vehicle B was traded in for how much? 120,000 rands on vehicle C. And vehicle C has a cost of 500,000 rands. And a residual value of this vehicle is 80,000 rands and the useful life is five years. Now, after that, this transaction is quiet. And what comes to my mind, we received the vehicle C. And vehicle C was costing 500,000 rands. Was it cash or credit? If they are quiet, the assumption is that it was bought on credit. So meaning trade payables will be affected. Why they will be affected? Because we received an asset that was worth 500,000 rands, but we did not pay a cent. But the trade in value, meaning the value of asset B that we gave away was 120,000. So now we need to minus 120,000 and to say we owe the creditor the difference between the two. Therefore now we say 500, thousand rands minus 120 thousand rands we will be owing the creditor an amount of 380 thousand rands and there was no mention to say this was paid so now if there was no payment it means we still owe the creditor an amount of 380 thousand rands so now let me go and i record that under my uh, current liabilities and that will be treated as uh, trade payables and it will be plus 380,000 rands. And we know that this 380,000 rands is the sum of 500,000 rands minus the trade in value of 120,000 rands. That is where this 380,000 rands is coming from. And if you want, you can just have <clears throat> both figures say plus 500,000 rands minus 120,000 rands that will still be acceptable because the net will be 380,000 rands that we owe to the creditor now and again one will argue but the repayment of the motor vehicle is normally done over a period of five years why don't we record this as a as a, as a non-current liability that can also be that argument is honestly correct because most of the times motor vehicle financing will be over a period of five years and this question was really not clear either should this be for five years or three years payment or whatever period it is not clear i'm just making an assumption and concluding that the three eighty thousand will be paid uh, in a short space of time so now i have recorded this uh, liability remember i bought a new vehicle that is costing 500,000 rands. Meaning, and don't forget that vehicle B was costing 300,000 rands. And this needs to be removed from the books of the business. Therefore, now, in my trial balance, in my trial balance under current non current assets, I need to remove the vehicle that is included here. Because included in this 700,000 rands is the cost of the vehicle that was disposed and i don't want to say the cost of the vehicle that was disposed appearing in the carrying value of my asset at the end of the year because when i'm doing the statement of financial position i want to know the value which is the carrying value of the asset at the end of the year and motor vehicle b is no longer in the business so i don't need the carrying value of motor vehicle b in the statement of financial position by the end of the current year so now hence i have to say minus three hundred thousand rands 
meaning I don't need the cost of vehicle B because vehicle B was sold. Then now I need to add my new vehicle, vehicle A, uh, sorry, vehicle C, and the cost of vehicle C is 500,000 rands. Now, please don't forget that we had 330,000 rands. And this 330,000 rands include accumulated depreciation for motor vehicle B, and motor vehicle B is no longer supposed to be in the records of the business. So now, that accumulated depreciation of 330,000 include depreciation or accumulated depreciation for motor vehicle B, and is for the year 2007, 2008, and 2009. And I need to remove that completely out of the books of the business. So now let us go and we confirm that with the information that is provided. Remember, we were informed that both of these vehicles, which had been bought by the Cross Corporation on the 1st of January 2007, and both vehicles have a useful life of five years, meaning the depreciation for the year 2007, 208 and 209 was recorded in our accumulated depreciation and that accumulated depreciation for 207 208 and 209 for vehicle b became an opening balance in the year 2010 so now the opening balance that appears in my trial balance meaning the opening balance of the accumulated depreciation of 330,000 is for two assets for three years meaning 207, 208, and 209, meaning for vehicle A and for vehicle B, and that became opening balance in the year 2010. Therefore, now I need to adjust my opening balance so that I remove the asset that is no longer in the business so that the accumulated that I have is only for the asset that are in the business until the end of the current year. So now let me go and do those calculations. Let us first test how was motor vehicle uh, 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 motor vehicles depreciation calculated let us go there and we check the cost uh, residual value and the useful life of these assets now uh, we have their cost 400,000 rands and 300,000 rands and I need to remove this one motor vehicle motor vehicle B then I have to calculate depreciation for vehicle B in fact, accumulated depreciation for vehicle B from the date it was bought until the end of the previous year. Accumulated depreciation for vehicle B because vehicle B was sold. I don't want its accumulated to be there in the opening balance. So now I will say for the year 2007, for the year 2007, remember the cost of this vehicle, it is 300,000 rands. And accumulated depreciation is 50,000 rands. Then it was bought in the beginning of the year. If I divide this by five years, let us check uh, if was it really 50,000 rands in terms of the residual value. Residual value, yes, was 50,000 rands. Then if I say now 300,000 rands. Minus 50,000 rands will give me 250,000 rands. Divide this by 5. I get a depreciation of 50,000 rands. Remember, we are using a straight line method. Therefore, now depreciation for the year 2008 will amount to the same amount, 50,000 rands. And depreciation for the year 2009 will amount, remember, calculations will remain the same. For the year 2009, it will be 50,000 rands. And this is becoming an opening balance, opening balance of the accumulated depreciation for vehicle B. Opening balance on the 1st of January in the year, on the 1st of January in the year 2010. This is an opening balance, a total of 150,000 rands. This amount is included in that opening balance. This amount is inside the included in the opening balance of 330,000 rands of that accumulated depreciation that we see at 330. The one for vehicle B is inside there because it's for our vehicles, all of them. Then now we go to, let us prove that holistically. 
when I say holistically, meaning accounting for vehicle A. Vehicle A, deep, uh, cost is 400,000 rands. Residual value, 100,000 rands. They have the same useful life. Then now I want to prove that the 300,000 rands is really the sum of the two assets as an opening balance. Now I want to also prove to you that accumulated depreciation for motor vehicle A added to motor vehicle B for the three years will give us the same amount of 310,000 rands. I know this is not necessary to do, but uh, to some students it might be of great uh, value. The cost of vehicle A it is 400,000 rands. Residual value, which is the value of the asset after four years, is 100,000 rands. Divide this by the useful life. This will give us 60,000 rands. Let me confirm that it is 60,000 rands. 400,000 minus 100,000. It is 300,000 divided by five. Depreciation for the year is 60,000 rands. Now for the year 2008, I will get the same 60,000 rands. And for the year 2009, there's no way we can have two 2008. 2009, it will be another 60,000 rands. And if we say six times three will give us 18 and that will be 180,000 rands. And if we say 150 plus 180,000, it will give us 330,000 rands. A 60 times by three, 180 plus 150,000, it is 330,000 rands. So it is very clear and very evident or very vivid that the amount of the opening balance in terms of the accumulated depreciation that we see in the trial balance, which is 330,000, is really for two assets, vehicle A and vehicle B. And we don't need vehicle B appearing there why? Because we want to know the value of the asset at the end of the year when vehicle B is no longer there, not the value of the asset at the beginning of the year when vehicle B was still in the business. We don't want that. We want it at the end of the year when vehicle B was no longer in the business. So now hence, we need to minus that 150,000 rands so that we are left with 180,000 rands for our accumulated depreciation. So now this is uh, the holistic approach in terms of calculation of this. And now, and I hope your math skill is uh, is, is tacked, honestly. Now we have deducted 330,000. Therefore now we need to say plus 150,000 rents. I hope you understand this one. Remember, this is minus 330. Then if you say plus uh, 150 this will give us an amount of 180,000 rands negative therefore now meaning we're supposed to be deducting the 150,000 sorry the 180,000 rands not deducting the 150,000 uh, um, rands including that 330,000 rands so now this will be the 180 that will end up being deducted when we we'll de uh, add this two so now what will be adding now is to say plus 150,000 rands and by saying plus 150,000 rands it means we are now removing the 150,000 rands that is inside the 330,000 rands and now what else is left there is one thing left depreciation for the current year for the remaining assets that were there in the business until the end of the year we have the cost of all the assets remove the one that is no longer in the business at the end of the year which was vehicle b and we removed the accumulated depreciation for the asset that is no longer in the business then after we need to subtract depreciation for the current year minus depreciation for the current year then now depreciation for the current year must only be in the statement of financial position for the assets that are in the business but in the statement of comprehensive income it must be the depreciation for the assets that were in the business for the current year and are still in the business for the current year and these are two separate things i'll explain them as 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 as, as i'm doing the calculations now vehicle b was in the business until the end of december 
because it was sold at the end of December. So now we need the depreciation for vehicle B for income statement perspective, please. For income statement perspective. But when it comes to vehicle A, we need vehicle A. But vehicle C was bought at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, we don't need depreciation because it was at the end of the year. So the depreciation that we need to record in the statement of financial position is only for the depreciation of motor vehicle A that was in the business for the entire year. Because we need the carrying value of this asset at the end of the current year. So now we know that the depreciation for vehicle B for the entire year, it is 60,000 rands. Remember, this is straight line method. Nothing changes. So now we need to deduct only 60,000 rands when it comes to depreciation of the current year in the statement of financial position. But when it comes to the statement of uh, comprehensive income, we need depreciation for 2010, which is vehicle A and vehicle B. And vehicle A depreciation being 60,000 rands, and vehicles B depreciation being 50,000 rands. In the income statement, we record the entire 110,000 rands because these were the depreciations for the current year. But in the statement of financial position, we only record for the assets that are still in the business and were in the business and depreciated or were in the, are still in the business only for the current year in the balance sheet statement. So now in the income statement, we stick to the depreciation for the assets that are only or were in the business in the current year, plus 50,000 rands. So now this will give us an amount of 110,000 rands. Then this will be our depreciation. Now let me conclude this question in a very, very, very simple approach. This adjustment and is the biggest adjustment, honestly. We have our vehicles. I'm doing ledger accounts now. Vehicles at cost. And remember, we still have to account for the asset disposal. Vehicles at cost. Then after I do accumulated depreciation. Just want to close it from this easy perspective. Accumulated depreciation. We will have a balance here. And our balance will be a figure of 330,000 rands opening balance. Then we'll have depreciation for the current year. And our depreciation for the current year is for the asset that depreciated during the year. Then after we will have to close this ledger account. Just want to show you the easy ledger account perspective. But not all the terms that the, uh, the ledger account is necessary to be done. Now, asset disposal, we are recording all the depreciation for the asset that was disposed until the date it was disposed. Remember, motor vehicle B was in the business for four years in the year 2007, 2008, 2009, and 2010. So the depreciation for 2010 will be accounted for, and 2010 depreciation will still be 50,000 rands. So now, meaning the total accumulated depreciation for motor vehicle B up to the date it was traded in or disposed will be 200,000 rands, the total. Because 2010 will be again 50,000 rands because this asset was sold at the end of 2010. So the total accumulated depreciation that need to be removed is 200,000 rands for vehicle B. Therefore now, I have to balance this ledger account, 330 plus 110,000. It is 440,000 rands, 440,000 rands. If I say for 40,000 rands minus 200,000 rands, I get 240,000 rands. And 240,000 rands will be the balance brought down. This will be the CD of the balance. Balance carried down. Then I go to my assets and I say there was an opening balance in my assets. And my two assets that have been in the business for many years was five hundred was seven hundred thousand rands. 
and I bought a new asset vehicle C at the end of the year. And this was a uh, creditors. It was bought on credit. And there was a motor vehicle, which is vehicle B, that was disposed. Asset disposal authorized in. And my asset disposal cost is 300,000 rands. Remember, this is the negative that I deducted. This is the positive that I added in terms of 500,000 rands. Then after, uh, there was no other disposal or acquisition of an item called a uh, motor vehicle. Therefore, now I will have here 1,200,000 rands. And I'll have 1,200,000 rands. Therefore, now the difference between the two will be 1,200,000 rands minus 300,000 rands. This gives me an amount of 900,000 rands, which is the balance carried down. And 900,000 rands will be the balance carried down. Then now I can be able to say 900,000 rands minus accumulated depreciation minus 240,000 rands. So now this will give me 660,000 rands, meaning the carrying amount of motor vehicles by the end of the year will be 660,000 rands. Then I add my property because there was a property that was worth 1.5 million plus the revaluation surplus of 200,000 rands because I want to know the total value of my assets, all of them. Then after I will be able to say 600,000 rands plus 200,000 rands plus 1.5. 1,500,000 rands. Then I get to 2,360,000 rands. So this is the carrying amount of all my assets. Let me go and check in the balance sheet the figure that I've added and subtracted. If do they give me the same amount? Now we have the 1,500,000 rands of the property plus 700,000 rands. I want to add the plus only. Uh, plus 500,000 rands, plus 150,000 rands, plus 200,000 rands, minus 300,000 rands, minus 330,000 rands, minus 60,000. This gives me the same amount, 2,360,000 rands. So either way you do it, you get to the same figure. You can use the ledger account, then add the assets that were not included there. You still get to the non-current assets, the 2,360,000 rands. So now this will be the carrying amount of the property plant and equipment at the end of the year. And you can see my figures are really talking to one another. Remember, the carrying amount was the carrying amount first. This was the... A cost of the asset at the end of the year and the accumulated depreciation end of the year this minus this you got the carrying amount of the vehicle 660,000 rands only the vehicles then you add the property then you add the revaluation surplus you get the same 2 million 360,000 rands so if you want you can do the ledger accounts if you want you don't have to do the ledger accounts the choice is all yours now Another ledger account that is very important is the asset disposal ledger account. Asset disposal ledger account. And in the asset disposal, we know that we'll be recording vehicles that cost. Our vehicles that cost amount to 300,000 rands. Then we have the accumulated depreciation amount. Accumulated depreciation will be 200,000 rands. Then we have the trade in value. The asset was traded in at the value of 120,000 rands. So now we must determine the difference if will it be a profit or a loss on the trade in or the sale of this asset. So now we will have 200,000 plus 120,000. We get 320 minus 300,000 we have the difference as 20,000 rands. 
and this difference is on the debit side 20,000 rands because the bigger side the credit side and the minute the difference is on the debit side this is the profit on disposal then we can see that this is the profit on the disposal of this asset so now we uh, could also have calculated the profit by saying motor vehicle b remember we are doing vehicle b now vehicle b is cost or vehicle b is carrying amount in fact the carrying amount of motor vehicle b will be the cost of three hundred thousand rands minus the total accumulated depreciation up to the date it was sold i did show you those calculations minus two hundred thousand rands therefore now meaning the value of this asset by the end of the year must have been hundred thousand rands at the end of this four years but the selling price which is the trading value the trading value of this asset was 120,000 rands. It was traded in at a higher price than it was supposed to be. And you can see that the difference is 20,000 being a profit on the disposal of this asset. So now if a profit was made, then now in the income statement, we need to recognize the profit on the disposal of this asset as 20,000 rands. And I've shown you now all the dynamics of this type of question. Either way, you will be right as long you still get to the same figures. And whatever method suits you, it is the best for you. Please choose that method. Now let's go to the data. Another bit, a uh, small challenging question as I'm closing the question now. Included in the trade receivables is a data SJD who owes the close corporation 8,000. He has been declared insolvent and received a check of 75 cents in the rent from his estate, meaning 75 cents is 75 percent. So now 75 cents was received, which is 75 percent in the rent. Then 25 cents will never to be received. So now, meaning this data is definitely unable to pay us completely. Therefore, now part of what you owe us will be received. And the amount that will be received will be 75 percent. Uh, of what he owes us meaning 6,000 will be received and another part of this uh, account will be a bad debt therefore now our expenses will go up by 2,000 because 25 <clears> percent uh, of this amount will not be received so 2,000 becomes a bad debt therefore now we have to remove our data and reduce our data by 8,000 because part of this 8,000 was received and part of this 8,000 is a bad debt. So now we must increase our bank. Why increase our bank? Because this has not yet been recorded. So money that was received was not yet accounted for in the bank account. But there's a part of the credit losses, meaning bad debt of 2,000 that we must record, which is the debit side. Then in the statement of financial position, we need to reduce our debtors by an amount of 8,000 rands and not forgetting uh, that uh, another part is bank therefore now our bank must be increased by an amount of six thousand rents so now we have recorded all three of them the debit side is bank bank went up debtors went up data in fact bad debt went up and our debtors decreased by an amount of eight thousand rents so now let us continue on that same note, concluding this question paper. Quite a very, very long, otherwise I can admit on that. The allowance for credit losses is maintained at 10% of the remaining debtors or of the trade receivables. Remember, 8,000 now is no longer a debtor, it's been declared insolvent. So now that amount must not partake in the calculation of our allowances for credit losses. Remember, our accounts receivables were 198,000 rands, and 8,000 rands became a bad debt. So now, meaning our outstanding accounts receivables now will be accounts receivables of 198,000 rands minus 8,000 rands, meaning the difference will be 190,000 rands. Then we multiply this by 10% and it gives us 19,000 rands. And we go and we compare this with the allowance that appears in the total balance. 
in the trial balance there was an allowance of 11,000 and now the allowance for credit losses is moving from 11% to 19%. In, in fact, from 11,000 to 19,000 rands. So now meaning we need to record the difference in the income statement. And how do we do such? We just have to say 19,000 minus 11,000 rands. We record only the difference of 8,000 rands in the statement of uh, changes in a statement of financial position and also in the statement of comprehensive income. So now in the income statement, we increase our debtors by 8,000 and that 8,000 being the amount minus 8,000 again, being the amount which the allowance increased by. And if you want, you could have just said 11,000 plus 8,000, you just say minus 19,000 that will still not be a problem. So now that will be how you account for the increase in the allowance for credit losses When it's decreasing then it will be the other way around where then you will be increase, uh, uh, Decreasing or increasing your other incomes in terms of the income statement Then we go to the F adjustment that says the insurance premium is 3,000 per month and 3,000 times by 12 will give us 36,000 rands. And they say it has been paid until 31st of January 2011. So now meaning this is for 13 months. We paid up to, in fact, up to January. But we paid for 12 months because another 3,000 was paid last year. Remember. There was a prepaid expense from last year, 3000 It was paid for January. So now in the current year, we paid for 12 months instead of paying for 11 months because another month was already paid last year for the current year. So now I don't, I, I was just correcting what I said to say 13 months. It's not 13 months. We paid for 12 months here. So now meaning one amount is a prepaid expense. So now we need to say a prepaid expense is an asset and if prepared expense is an asset then we need to debit our prepaid expense in terms of insurance by 3000 rands and we credit uh, insurance expense by an amount of 3000 rands therefore now under statement of financial position we need to add that 3000 under current liabilities where we say plus i uh, know is an asset and uh debtors we plus the three thousand plus three thousand rents then in our income statement we need to minus the three thousand the three thousand rents now what i have not recorded yet was the prepaid reversal opening balance that I should have recorded in the beginning of the current period. We first have to say plus 3,000, then minus 3,000. The plus 3,000 is the one that I recorded previously, but I just did not re uh, re uh, acknowledge it in the income statement. If you remember the insurance of 3,000 opening balance, where we were cancelling the prepaid by 3,000, I also did a ledger account for that, but by mistake I forgot. So that is the plus where we debited the insurance expense for the current year and we reverse the prepaid expense, which is the reversal by the end of January. Uh, sorry for uh, forgetting that, but think that at least I am reminded. So now insurance for the current year will have to amount to a total of 36,000 rands for the entire year. Then now I go to the next adjustment, and the next adjustment says Newton and Yoka have agreed that a member's distribution of 100,000 rands must be made, which must be credited against their interest uh, free loan accounts. Remember, these members they borrowed money from the CC and they are owing the CC, but they don't pay interest. And this was the profit that they decided it to be shared among them. And remember, part of this is 70%. And 70% will be 70,000. And part of this is 30% to Yorker. And 30% will be 30,000. And 
then one of the members, which is Newton, Newton was owing the cross corporation 100,000 rands. So now this will be reduced by 70,000 rands. And he will still be owing 30,000 rands. And Yoka will pay the entire 30,000, which was from the distribution. Therefore, now this will give the zero balance. What does this adjustment mean when it says must be accredited against their loan account? In other words, they say the profit that was set can it be used as a repayment of their loan account. So now this 70,000 will be a loan repayment and this 30,000 will be a loan repayment. So now if this is a loan repayment, therefore now we must reduce the loans by the amount that was distributed to them. So now for this one, the loan balance would have been opening balance 30,000 uh, distribution. In fact, the repayment through distribution will be 30,000. Then the balance will be zero. Opening balance for this one will be 100,000 minus 70,000 distribution of profit as a repayment. The closing balance will be 30,000 rands. This will be the closing balance. And all this will be the repayments. So now I've already done the note on a loan uh, to these two members. Then I must record their repayment in the statement of financial position. Therefore now minus the full amount because the total repayment is 100,000 rands. Therefore now the loan balance will be 30,000 rands. I just did not split uh, in the balance sheet but only split it in their loan accounts. Then we go to the taxation expense. It is stated that we must provide for the income tax expense estimated as 110,000 rands. We estimate our tax expense, so we estimated tax expense to be 110,000 rands. Remember, there was the repayment that took place during the year. We made provisional tax payments to SARS and we need to uh, acknowledge our repayments and determine either do we still owe SARS or SARS owes us by the end of the current year. So now those repayments, they appear there in the statement of financial position. And uh, are still clearing uh, all this uh, writing. There we do have our SARS provisional tax payments, 90,000 rands. So now we paid 90,000 rands instead of paying the entire 110,000 rands. So now I just have to deduct the 90,000 rands to determine how much do I owe to SARS because we paid less than what we're supposed to and the difference will be 20,000 rands. This is the liability SARS current tax payable. But we must record the 110,000 as a tax expense then after also record the 20,000 rands as SARS current tax payable. Therefore now this will be an amount of 20,000 rands which is from 110,000 rands minus 90,000 rands. This will, how this will appear in your workings. Then in my income statement, I need to acknowledge that my taxation expense, it is a figure of 110,000 rands. There it should appear as negative. This was the last general entry. And after this general entry, then I can compile, just do all the recalculation. As I said, that the ill health of the partner who decide to retire is something that we lately do not assess anymore. Therefore, now let me just do the compiling of everything now, just calculating all oh, something that just hit my mind. The distribution of profit that amounted to 100,000 rands must affect the statement of changes in equity. The distribution must affect the statement of changes in equity. Let me just leave one line here and say distribution. Because distribution is done after the profit has been uh, made. 100,000 rands. Then there will be 100,000 rands. There we are here we'll have total comprehensive where we record the revaluation for the current year is 200,000 rands and profit is still in question. Then now let me go to my income statement. There is nothing that affected my sales 2,370,000. 
then after i have my cost of sales as 1 million 380 thousand rands 2 million 370 thousand my mass 2 million 370 thousand minus 1 million 380 thousand i get 990 thousand rands then i must just totalize all my expenses wages 200 thousand rents salaries to members i have 44000 my credit loss it is 10000 plus 8 plus 2000 this will be 20000 then i uh, can check 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 all the figures seem to be right there is a line here Then let me just do a recalculation for my expenses, but I know the total already 20,000 plus 36,000 plus 200,000 plus 240,000 plus 44,000 plus 110,000. Thousand runs. Then we have nine hundred and ninety thousand, which is gross profit plus twenty thousand minus six fifty thousand. This gives a total of three hundred and sixty thousand. Three hundred and sixty thousand minus ninety thousand. I forgot to deduct the ninety thousand. Yes. 90,000 of the finance cost. This gives a total of 270,000 rands. 270,000 minus 110,000 rands, which is taxation expense. Get profit for the year as 160,000 rands. Profit for the year plus 200,000, which is the revaluation, I get 360,000 rands. And under my total comprehensive, in my statement of changes in equity, then I will record the 160,000 rands of the profit. Then the total will be 360,000 rands. So I can also record my opening balances, 600,000 rands capital members contribution, plus 200,000, plus 501,000, I get one million three hundred and one thousand plus three hundred and sixty thousand plus or oh, minus hundred thousand. I get one million five hundred and sixty one thousand of which year I have four hundred thousand rents. And here I have 180,000 rands. And here is 420,000. Remember, this is the balance on the 31st of December in the year 2010. Don't forget that. So my 1,560,000 in my equity goes straight to the statement of financial position. Under equity, I have 1,560,000 rands. Is it 1,560,000? One million five sixty one thousand rands. One million five hundred ten sixty one thousand rands. When that is done, then I know my PPE has been accounted for. Then I go to my current assets inventory, no changes, hundred and forty one thousand. But my bank must be affected or adjusted. Debtors, hundred and ninety eight thousand minus uh, nineteen thousand. Uh, minus 8,000 plus 3,000 I get 174,000 
Don't worry about the fact that I'm saying minus 90,000 is 11,000 plus 8,000 is 19,000. Uh, then after I save 30,500 plus 6,000 that was received, I get 36,500 plus 174,000 plus 141,000 plus 30,000. This gives a total of 381,500 plus 2,360,000 then the total of my assets with the limited space all of my assets let me just minimize the total of all of my assets is two million seven hundred and forty one thousand five hundred that is my total assets this must be rec recorded under assets line item there will be a line item that says assets let me record the note there as i said that i have very much limited space assets this will be where this will be recorded then i come now to my equity and straight to my <clears throat> straight to my uh, current liabilities there was the prepaid insurance that i've not recorded here yep prepaid insurance at the end of the year it was three thousand it was three thousand i did not record it here it must be there in my other adjustments i'm very sure i recorded that was prepaid in terms of insurance if i did not then i have to account for it yes this was prepaid insurance 3000 and insurance of 3000. There was prepaid insurance of 3000. And that insurance, remember, it came exactly from here where we were told that has been paid until 31st of January. So that is prepaid at the end of the current year. And I think it's just being tired not to, for, to record that. Maybe some of you have identified in my calculations. So now there is insurance that was prepaid 3000 at the end of the current year. Oh no, prepaid insurance as an asset. Sorry, 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 sorry. Not a liability. That I've accounted for it. Sorry for that. I think it's just being tired. So now there is nothing else. I think that plus uh, meant that I have to add something. I think that's all. Then we have 173,000 plus 7,500 plus 380,000 then this will give us a total of 560,000 uh, 560,500 then add all the current liability items plus 100,000 plus 20,000 this gives a total of current liabilities as a sum of 680,500 then our total will be plus 500,000 plus 1,561,000 If we add all of them, our equity and liability comes to <clears throat> the figure of 2,741,500. And this figure is exactly the same as that of our assets, 2,741,500. Uh, it's been a very, very long question. Let me say thank you guys. If you have any questions or perhaps have made any mistake in my calculations, which I don't think so, uh, please hit me with a comment and if you like this video, please uh, say you like it and only have good comments, no bad comments. And let me say thank you guys. Uh, God bless you.